and welcome to episode 19 of the Swan Bank podcast. We are back and I'm joined by the wonderful Catherine Stevens. Catherine, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Sam. Did you listen to last week's episode? Not yet. I don't even know who was on. Not no. yet? I don't, I don't even know who was on. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good job because I didn't do one, so it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> wow, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. I, I got Fair to thir- I got to Thursday, and I thought I, I'm, I was really supposed to have like organised something about this podcast malarkey, and I happened to be sat next to George Bowden. I said, George, do you want to come on and be a guest on this one man podcast? <laughs> and she said, not in a million years. So that was the oh. end of that. So that's yeah. a bit harsh, isn't it? I. I, I I mean, I thought so. I thought so. I would, I would jump at the chance. <laughs> who, who wouldn't want to be on this podcast? I mean, who wouldn't? Wow. Well, there we go. But uh, we're, we're, we're trying something new today, aren't we? We are, Sam. We yeah. are. Tell us why we're trying something new. So having gone 16 months without having to, you know, come in, in contact with anyone, without having to self-isolate anything, yesterday discovered I'd come into contact with somebody who had coronavirus and so I'm uh, now I'm now in in isolation in isolation, in isolation. trapped in your room but room. Uh, the thing is Sam it's not just you it's like it's like probably three quarters of our tech team yeah I mean quite a lot of us were in the same place together which probably wasn't the wisest thing to do I it, I mean it we went to the pub to watch the football and and that was the reason why yeah um, and you were and you were completely compliant with that, but then you've all been tracked and traced, haven't you? Uh, well, interestingly, we we are just preempting the track and trace because we know we know that somebody who was there was tested positive. Yes. So we're we've, we're doing the right thing, doing the right thing, and we are we are self isolating completely but... abandoning me for Sunday. Is what you're doing? Uh, well, what can I say? Well, I just to be honest, I just didn't fancy it. I just didn't fancy yeah. it. So fancy the Sunday off. <laughs> Just, I've had enough. I'm, I'm done. Oh, that's funny. But um, I, I mean, uh, one of my friends did say at least England won because can you imagine having gone to the pub to to watch the football? Yeah. They lost, yeah. and then you discovered you had to self isolate for ten days. That would be a little, yeah. little soul destroying, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we'll we'll talk about the football in a minute. What have you been up to since we last since we last spoke? Oh, since we last spoke. So I have worked away for a few days. You have? Last week. So I was leading the retreat for the ordinance. So that's that's like people in the Methodist Church before they're ordained as ministers have a retreat. And I'm the team leader of that retreat. So I was so I was I was doing that. Um, and um, interestingly, this year it wasn't just for those who were about to be ordained, it was for those who've just been ordained because because there's a poor group that have been waiting for a year Wowzers. for their ordination it's been postponed for a year so um so i've been with those 40 i think there was 46 of us in the end wow. um who were together monday to friday last week um and um and i was leading the retreat with um with the the little team that i work with on that great it was great actually it was great and uh, so it was held at cliff college um, nice. which was a really good venue for it Lovely, stuff. Um, lovely little yeah. place yes and and i was working with your dad who works there and your dad was a very helpful man he does have his moments does my dad he's all right he's all right but he's not he's not as miserable as you make him out to be sam yeah yeah he, i mean he won't he'll have gone home and not spoken for a couple of hours because he was exhausted oh not necessarily just he by did. you but just by the general you know well I, i'm not exhausting am i <laughs> no, i mean never not. not at all not at all <laughs> Uh, um, your dad does work some long hours. He does. I'll give him that. He's he a, does. He's a hard worker. He he puts some effort in. Puts some he effort does. in. Unsure if it's he because does. he doesn't like my mum anymore, or because he's like committed to the cause, or I don't know. We'll, we'll... Uh, well, uh, I I saw them. Your mum and dad came to church a week past Saturday. Oh, they did, yeah. Um, to uh, to drop um, your sister and your niece off at church. They did. And um and. To be fair, they seem they seem fairly happy with each other at that moment. So I don't think you should worry, Sam. No, I, I think I, all is fine. They are they are all good. Uh, something amusing has just happened. So because we're on Zoom and we're we we were a bit lazy and just used the same meeting as what we've got later on. So Keith Stubbs has just entered the waiting room of this meeting. <laughs> should we 
Shall we invite him in or shall we uh, shall we leave him out? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I mean, I'd love to get Keith Stubbs onto this at some point, but we perhaps should give him a bit of warning before right. we do so. Okay. I think. I'll leave. I don't know. What do you I'll think? Tell you what, we'll leave him in the waiting room. We've we've only got you know. 25 minutes left to record, so we can wait there for a little while. He'll, he'll okay. be fine. He'll be I mean, fine. he's very keen for our next meeting, isn't he? He's, I mean, gotta give, him, gotta he's, give him his dues. He is keen. He's more than 45 minutes early for a meeting, so. Wow. That's... He, must, he mustn't be able to wait. He must be like absolutely <laughs> wetting himself with excitement in this moment. <laughs> he also probably doesn't even know that this podcast is a thing either, does he? So he'll be, uh, be a whole new world for, for, our, for our key. Brilliant. <laughs> So you've been hanging out with your ordinary nans. Is there anything uh, anything amusing you've got to tell us from uh, from what's been going on the last couple of weeks? Have you been outside enjoying the nice weather? Have you what have you been up to? Well, um, actually, because um, um, this week has been quite a full week, if I'm honest, and um, and uh, you know that um, I try if I can for my rest day to be Friday, but I can't I'll be off tomorrow because i've got a funeral and various other things to do so i've taken today like the day part of today off because my mum and dad are visiting indeed so i've been out with joan and bob how lovely yes do you want to know what we did i'd love to know what you did we went to trenton because that's what you do with old people you go to trenton yeah yeah. when i said when my grandparents come to stay that's just what i do because i don't really know what else to do yeah yeah so I went to Trenton. We had a very nice time at Trenton. Lovely. Um, and I bought some stuff for my garden because I'm actually into my garden. I've heard. Yeah. it's it's look. I mean, if I do say so myself, Sam, it's looking cracking. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Ego for lunch. Oh, very nice. I do like a, I like a lunch at Ego. I'm a big fan. I like a lunch at Ego. I'm a big fan. It's really nice. Maybe we should start having meetings at Ego at lunchtime. <gasps> That'd be good. Maybe. My mum and dad had one of those, you know, mini puddings with a drink. Like oh, mini pudding I, and a drink. I love one of them. Yeah. I had a big pudding though. Yeah. I love a little pudding. Because <laughs> it makes me feel a bit grown up that I'm having like a coffee after after my meal. Yeah. And then also yeah. there's a, just a little couple of mouthfuls of a treat. Like, yes. Feels like a pudding it on the cheek. It was lovely. It was lovely. Nice. How are Joan and Bob? It was lovely to see them on Sunday evening. We had a we had oh. good banter. Oh, good. He said good. nice things about me, which was nice. Yeah, they don't say that when they're talking to me about no, you. No, no, no. He didn't say very they nice just... things about you, but he told me not to repeat those. So that's it. <laughs> My dad tells lies. <laughs> um... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> they're very well, thank you, Sam. Good. Very well. Because this is the first time yeah. they've been back to Stoke since like last March, apart from Christmas. Apart from Christmas. They came at Christmas for a couple of days. Uh, well, well, however long you could come at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. So I've not seen them for ages and ages. So that was nice. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Now, since we last spoke, uh, the the Euros has started. The European oh. Football Championships. Are, are you into it? Are you a fan? Do you get excited by it? I do you know Sam? I have done in the past. Okay. Um, this year I have not been so. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want England to do really well. It would be fabulous if they won. I'm like, you know, I I, I am. I quite like football, but I just I, I think I just haven't been able to get in the zone this year for some okay. reason. So, but you know, I will I will watch it. It's eight o'clock on Saturday night, I believe, isn't it? But yeah, indeed, indeed. I'll be watching at eight o'clock on Saturday night. Did you watch England v Germany? Well, um, we had it on um, very loud in the house and I sat in the garden and listened. It was like okay. listening to the radio because oh. it was a really nice night. Okay. And so so I had my tea outside with the football on in the background so I could hear what oh, was going lovely. on. And then if anything sounded exciting, you could run in the house oh, and see. see what was going on. See. Very so, good. yeah, yeah. So that was so that was good. Um, nice. Yeah. I remember Euros of the past. Yeah. I remember when I was about 16 years old. I don't okay. remember which year it would be. 90. Was it? Was there a year or 90? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, no, that, that, the, be. That, no. that was the World Cup. Italia 90. Oh. So what was the year or after that then? Uh, so a year in 96 was the one that was in England. No, it wasn't that one. It was the one when I remember Chris Waddle, right? It was it went to penalties and I hid behind a cushion. Was it was that, so I think tense. That was, I think that was Italia 90. I think that was the World Cup. Are you sure? I, well, I think so. Oh, okay. It probably was, actually. 
But anyway, I remember penalty shootout being so stressful. And I remember hiding behind the cushion and Chris Waddle like skied it. Yeah, I just um, Googled Italia 90 Waddle. And there's Um, videos of him missing a penalty. Yeah, yeah. That was the the one. That's the thing. See the miss as well. It like literally went up to orbit. He's a Geordie as well, isn't he, Chris Waddle? He was a Geordie, yeah. It was. You disowned him after that. (laughs) <laughs> can't trust a Geordie. He's got a posh accent, actually. You hear him now. He's like a Geordie gone south. Oh, I see. Is that is that what you're going to become? Well, I was chatting to someone on Saturday, and they were telling me they said your accent's changed, isn't it, since you've come here? Ooh. And I said, Oh, has it? And then I thought, Yeah, I think it has. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I've got I've got an American friend who's lived in Stoke for the last uh, five or six years. And listening to him speak now is hilarious because there's like certain <laughs> words that he says completely differently. Like tomato, he says like the postish man you've ever met. You've ever met. Like, Toma- tomato. He's like trying so hard to get rid of his American accent that he's put on this. Tomato. Proper posh boy accent. Anyway. Anyway. But you've, uh, you, you're, you're not so sold on the Euros, but you are sold on another sporting event going on right now. I'm, aren't you? I, love, I love the tennis. Do you? I love tennis. I used to play tennis. No way. In, um, yeah, oh. I was. I was. I was school number two. Right. I was okay. high school number two for tennis, and it was my it was my doubles partner who was the number one. She was better than me. Oh, I Lindsay, see. Lindsay, she was called. So Lindsay was better than me, but no we way. were like we were like one and two in school. No way. So I yeah. I would I've always watched people play doubles tennis and thought. That would absolutely terrify me. The th- the whole thing where they have to like crouch down as somebody crouch down so you don't get them. whacked on the back of the yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. How many does that happen? Is that a thing? Or did you just um, do it when you got I've... crossed with Lindsay? Um, I, <laughs> I have. N- I can honestly say I don't think I've ever whacked her on the back of the head with right. a tennis ball. Okay. Did you get whacked I... on the back of the head with a tennis ball? Um, not that I remember. What? Oh, you must not have been good then. Wow. Yeah, no um, I mean we we were all right back in the day. I was quite sporty. Yeah. When I was at school, I played hockey and I played netball. Wow. Yeah, and I did I did I did like um I was I, I did like um running, but not long distance. I was okay. more hundred meters person. Or a sprinter. A bit of a sprinter back in the day, not now. No way. And um and I also did long jump. Wow. Wow. Yeah. There you go. No way. So that was me. How about you? At school. Well, let me just pause there because you did tell me that when you were playing, were you picked last for something? I mean, that was football last recently. week. So that was... football last week. I'm thinking. I knew it was recently. So, so football Wednesday football. You were picked last. I was. Yeah. Oh. Was. I felt a bit bad for you. Did you? To be honest, when you shared that, yeah, I could see. I could see oh. you felt secretly sad inside. I was very upset. Very upset, you were though. only picked last though because Joel wasn't there. So someone <laughs> he, said, "You can't say that. That's terrible." He's not listening. Is That's he? terrible. Listening. Poor Joel. <laughs> Joel, you're always always top of my list, mate. Always top of my list. Anyway, uh, so you've been loving the tennis. You've been loving Wimbledon and yeah. Andy Murray. Yes. On the return, I, there's also some other like half decent British people at the moment. I saw uh, yeah. Cameron Norrie won today. Right, I do not have him caught up with today's tennis See. yet. Oh, yeah. Well. So thanks for spoiling that <laughs> for me. <laughs> that's what I've I've been sat at home all day, whereas you. But you, you like can... today at Wimbledon. That's me. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be Claire Baldwin. That's what I want to be. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, it was very interesting because uh, yesterday's match went to um, five sets. It did. Um, for Andy Murray. Against um, a German player. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? England. Oh, well, very English, interesting. He's Scottish. He's Scottish, not English. Oh, yeah. Fine. We we'll, kind of claim him, we'll don't claim we? Him we as claim British. Andy Murray. Yeah, yeah. Claim him as British. We claim Andy Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, we do. Um. So yeah, but interestingly enough, when he finished, he got quite emotional, didn't he? He did, and I've noticed that happened a few times when he played at when he played at Queens. Which is the tournament mm-hmm. before Wimbledon? Mm-hmm. He got a bit, mm-hmm. got a bit teary. Which you never, you never used to see that from our, our Andy, did you? No. Do you know why? I think. I mean, I might be completely wrong because okay. I have no idea. I don't know. The Captain man. Stevens, um, sports but... psychologist. Exactly. But <laughs> so it wasn't long ago that actually we're hearing about him probably having to retire yeah, yeah. because he's, he's he was injured. He, Dodgy his hips. Hip was shot. Yeah, yeah. And like so grandma. he's had operations. Yeah, yeah. So I reckon. He probably, and he said, thought, I'm never going to be competing at this level again. Yeah. This is it. My career's over. 
And then suddenly he's back on centre court and he's winning. And that's great. It is. So, Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. So why are we waffling on about football and tennis today? <laughs> why are we waffling on about football and tennis today? Well, we thought that it might be good to have a little bit of a conversation around around kind of competing, winning. Yeah. All those kind because of, the Bible says little bits and pieces about about this, not about tennis and football, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Because they weren't invented then, but but about com- about kind of running the race, that yeah, kind yeah. of running thing. The race. You, know, got some... you, you hear a lot of things in certain um, like uh, facets of the church talking about wanting to win people for Christ and winning yes. the battle and all that sort of thing. Lots of Old yes. Testament images about winning battles, and we're st- we're starting to see that come into lots of worship sh- worship worship songs worship <laughs> songs songs <laughs> worship songs uh, more, at the moment lots of lots of songs about like winning a victory and winning the battle which is interesting this is how i fight my battle yeah we yeah sing that don't we sometimes yeah yeah i'm not sure about the military language it's not it's not kind of everyone's cup of tea it's is interesting it? isn't it and i'm yeah. i'm interested into why it's something that's come back round again recently because that there's there's a sort of era of old hymn that would that would have a yes. similar sort of onward Christian soldiers type thing. Fight the good fight with all thy might, that so, kind of thing. So I wonder if you've got any wisdom about maybe why this has come back come back around again, perhaps. Well, I, I think it went out of favour because actually we recognise that there's a real challenge around um, being Christians and whether you know where we sit in terms of pacifism. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And um, just, just war theories and all of those kind of interesting, really complex things. Yeah, yeah. And so, so there was certainly. I remember a, a period of time um, when, when those ki- those kind hymns with that kind of language in terms of you know th- those kind of ones that we've just said were not were not in favour um, at all, and and felt actually that military militaristic kind of language yeah, is not yeah. a helpful yeah. kind of language when it comes to thinking about Christian faith and mm. thinking about Christ as um, as as our peace and you know and all those kind yeah, of complex ethical Christian ethics mm. uh, questions that that are in there as well. Um, but like you say, you know, some of the songs that we sing in church do pick up those things. I think that's partly um, that we're a kind of church that maybe doesn't have issues with singing those yeah, yeah. those songs. Though I would I would reckon there would be quite a lot of people within our congregation who would hold them all um, would be pacifists, I think, yeah. uh, and others who would be more into just war theory stuff. Mm. Um, so I think we probably have the mix in our church, I guess. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, um, it would be interesting to have that conversation with people. Um, but but uh, without a doubt, there are times in life when you can say, I'm fighting a battle. Mm. Um, and um, and we we might see that as a battle in the heavenly realms. You know, there's lots of scriptures around that, isn't it? Putting on the whole armour of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and, um, and we talk, you know, our, our, our um, fight... Our battle is not, you know, is against um, the the principalities and and that kind of yeah. thing. Um, so it's the so sort of language used around oh, like yeah. spiritual warfare and things like that is exactly. all very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And not it something really that is. I've particularly come across in the sort of tradition that the sort of Methodist tradition that I've been brought up in. But it certainly is something that if you were from a more, I guess, Pentecostal or potentially Baptist yeah. background, you might that might be more prevalent in your outworking yeah, of your faith interesting that you say that because i would say my upbringing did have that in it that's interesting and um, particularly as so i was brought up through the through kind of cliff college stuff okay and i remember being on mission 19 years old and leading a seminar on the armor of god and on spiritual warfare it was oh. actually a seminar that i was leading on spiritual warfare wow. at the time and um and did you have a full so, like battle outfit that you took with you did you do like do dress somebody up in a, in a roman roman soldier costume i, I looked like xena warrior princess <laughs> do you know who i'm talking about not a clue that sounds like a very <laughs> niche reference that does <laughs> yeah someone listening will know what I'm talking about. um i do remember though the material i presented was all that the, one of the evangelists at cliff she had written it so i just presented her oh, material right, because right. i felt completely ill-equipped yeah, to be able to to address that myself, really. Gee whiz. Um, wow. So yeah, 
yeah but but um yeah so there's there's lots of language around but interestingly if we think about if we're moving on to kind of um like winning people for christ yeah, yeah. language um then that, that's that's an an area isn't there about kind of you know because some people use the language of the lost talking mm-hmm. about people who don't know jesus yeah. and then winning people for christ so that brings in winning and losing again doesn't it um in it quite does. an interesting way it does mm. i'm not sure i've always been a bit skeptical about that phrase because i'm not sure it's the most yeah. i understand what people are trying to get at when they use that phrase yeah. but i'm not sure it comes yeah. with the the most helpful connotations all the time it feels like a bit of a like a like a dominating or a rather yeah. than a, what what we believe about people coming to know christ which is jesus coming alongside somebody and yeah. you know, it's it's yeah. just a very it's a very different way of perceiving what that journey towards a, a relationship yes. with god looks like yes yeah it is and and while i would be happy for people to use that language it's not language that i would tend yeah, to use yeah. myself i think it perhaps is language of its time and um in some ways uh, and I think when, you know, one of the things that you've heard me going on about like for a year now is pastoral <laughs> evangelism, yeah, yeah. which which is 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 much more the drawing alongside people, um, sharing love and compassion and, and, and speaking words of grace and truth into people's lives and journeying yeah. with them in their in their kind of faith discovery and discipleship and all of that kind of thing, which is um which which just just has a different feel to it yeah um i think yeah definitely. i think my really about winning people for christ is it's that's the, that that's maybe the first step that's the like that's like the the um it, it's a particular kind of evangelism i think yeah, yeah. And my worry with that has been where's the next step where's the discipleship yeah. where's the ongoing journeying with people yeah. in that yeah yeah and that comes in back into your um you you brought up the running the race stuff earlier on yeah um yeah and that when they it, it, you know almost like a uh, paradoxically when they talk about winning people for jesus actually what they're talking about is them just starting the race um yeah and and the whole image that paul's trying to get at is not about you the, the goal is not for you to win the race the goal is for you to just keep going in the race and yeah and yeah. endure through it yeah 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 that's interesting isn't it because actually um ultimately if we look at that then those of us who are in christ jesus we're all we're all winners we're yeah. all winners yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> isn't that nice there's no oh, losers here i used um, to wait that um, at school well, when everyone got like a taking part medal I used yeah, to, like, oh, yeah. that used to waz me off. That did terrible. Yeah, there was, and again, there was a real phase oh, um, when ev- when they couldn't let anybody not not win something. Know. Do you know, everybody had to win something, and it's like, and back in the <laughs> real world, you know, uh, that's interesting. But the truth is, for all of us who are in Christ, um, our 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 future is secure. Yeah. Um, and and actually, we've already won. In that, for us, eternal life isn't when we die. Yeah. Eternal life for us is now. Do you yeah, know, we yeah. live an eternal yeah. life. So, so death is just part of of eternity for us, isn't it? It's yeah, just, for sure. It's just part of the step of 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 living yeah. with Christ and in Christ. And it, and it comes um, back to course, the fact that yeah. it comes back to the fact that Jesus has won. Jesus is the one who is victorious, and so we share exactly. We, we share in, in the victory rather than winning yes. it for ourselves. Exactly exactly it's 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 already been won it's yeah. about us receiving that you yeah. know um um and uh yeah yeah it's it's quite quite an interesting conversation yes. to have really um of course we get into some interesting interesting kind of theological debates um of the stuff that you know it might be termed you know once saved always saved interesting debates yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, that we do not have time to unpick in the next five minutes no, of our don't. podcast. No, we don't. But what about someone who started the race and Anna's has pulled away? Yeah. You know what? What is that about? Uh, so, uh, so, and and uh, the, the Bible does speak into that. You know, you know that we we to continue the race, we to keep on going, we to persevere. Mm. Hebrews. We're looking at Hebrews at the moment, aren't we? And yeah. last Sunday, um, point what the passage in Hebrews ten speaks into this speaks into perseverance keeping on going encouraging yeah. one another and that's 
that's what I love about this. Since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us run with perseverance, the race marked before us, looking to Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Now, just imagine Christians present and those who've gone before us, like cheering us on, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. As, if, as if we're running in this race and they're all standing at the side, shouting words of encouragement, cheering us on, lobbing a water bottle at us as we're yeah. running by and saying, yeah. you can do it. You've got the resources you need. Keep on going. You're doing yeah. great. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when you picture, certainly when I picture that passage about running the race, I, yeah. I see a person on their own, like I picture a, a sprinter or even like a marathon runner who is, in yeah. a lot of senses, on their own as they run the race. Yeah. But, yeah. but as we know now, all of these athletes yeah. travel with vast amount of team and people yeah. to alongside them, people who know more necessarily about the the fitness stuff or the psychology stuff or the nutrition stuff than the person Absolutely. who's actually running the race knows. Yes. And and they, you know, take on all that knowledge and experience and use yeah. that to help them to to get as far in the race as they possibly can. And it's it's by no means an individualistic thing. Um yeah. as we maybe perceive it. It's a it's a whole team effort. But the responsibility for the running of the race that that does come down to us i guess we're the we're the person who has to put one foot in front of the other and keep going um, and it's up to us to choose how we engage with the team of people yeah. the cloud of witnesses around us isn't it yeah what do you think right can we sometimes give people a piggyback along the road yeah for sure yeah i, I think yeah. you've been banging on about that for a long time as well I think in in I the have, I? in the Hebrews, yeah, for sure, it's come out quite a lot in the Hebrews stuff yeah. around, particularly when people are in a place where they're struggling, um, yeah. us holding faith for one another, and it being a yeah. space where um, if you come with doubts or struggles, then other people will hold you and and yeah. carry you through those moments for sure, for sure. Yeah, there is. This is our, our faith is not something to be worked out on our own, is it? Our faith is something to be worked out in community. Yeah. We see that in the very nature of God Himself. We see that in the yeah. nature of the communities that he has that has been that have been born out of moves of moves of his spirit and and so uh, yeah in no way is it yeah. a something a, an isolated thing no no and I think that's this is quite an interesting conversation for us to have when we're you know there's loads of conversations going on at the minute about hybrid church and yeah, looking yeah. at um, yeah. looking at you know people physically being in church together but others who might just engage um and through through kind of um technology and you know kind of our online stuff yeah. um yeah. which is and it's a fabulous um tool isn't it it's oh, a fabulous sure. tool oh. and we're so grateful and we've learned so much this last year and a bit haven't we but um but i don't think i don't think you can you can find a substitute for physically being alongside people no. you know if, if that's all you've got then actually it's a real blessing and we're grateful yeah. you know to have that people who are housebound to it's a, it's a lifeline for them and that's that's amazing yeah. but there's something about being together and worshiping together and encouraging one another in that i bumped into someone today um lovely rob and carol from our church oh lovely rob and carol which was just so nice to oh, see wonderful. them and and we had a lovely chat and they asked how I was. So I said, and I said, how are you? And they said, they said, they're doing fine. But they said, oh, we're so missing. We're tuning in every Sunday and we're grateful, but but we miss being there. We really yeah, miss yeah. it. And yeah. they just can't wait till we're back together again. And that's just lovely, isn't it? it is. and, and I'm just, I'm just thinking, yeah, it'll be such a wonderful gift it will. to be, to be with others. It will. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I reckon we have waffled on for plenty long enough. Uh, this evening um, but Catherine as always thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom some of your sporting prowess from from years gone by thank um, you Sam I'm do you sure... want to play tennis with me sometime I, I'd love to I'd love a I'd love a tennis <laughs> lesson from you maybe we'll see see what happens all right uh, we'll be back next week hopefully in the same room I can't really I don't really know how many days this is going to last for um, I'm not really sure, so we'll see what happens. But uh, we'll be back again with another episode of the Swanman Podcast next week. Uh, see you then. God bless. Bye.